working on 21st century skills for several years in the MCIS and wanted to now take those 21st century skills and really formalize them in all of our K-11 classrooms. Um, so Milan 21 is the initiative that's going to help us do that over the next three to five years. So in the MCIS, uh, we are working on what we hope are authentic projects where students are working together in teams, they're solving problems, and um, we usually try to focus on one or two 21st century skills per project and really dig deep and hone in on those key 21st century skills in those projects. In our C-SPAN project, it's a, it's a big teamwork project. And uh, where each, each person on the team has a slightly different role, slightly different focus. They are asked to go online and research an animal, its habitat and its adaptations, and they have to note take from their internet sources. What they realized is that they have resources all around them, and when you collaborate with someone, you're going to be able to get what they know and what you know and possibly even push each other a little further and think outside of the box. So I think that I want children to become 21st century learners, which is why Mylan in 21 is so appropriate because that's what we're setting them up to be. These are students living in the 21st century, they're learning in the 21st century, so we have to meet them as to where they're at and those are 21st century skills. So a lot in math we use the iPads to record our thinking because a lot we'll just write the answers in our math journal but really to understand math you have to be able to explain it. So um, it's been fun to watch throughout the year. You know, At the beginning they would say, oh I used my brain, it helped me figure it out, but now they're able to say something like, I used the number line to help me. I started at three, I hopped up eight hops, and that got me my answer. Their jobs are a bit undefined at this point. You know, we, we as teachers hear that we're preparing students for jobs that don't even exist yet, so it's hard to imagine what work they're going to be doing, and I think that's why those soft skills of communicating and problem solving and organizing a task and the perseverance, those are things that really, really will help them prepare for any job. 21st century skills are essential both for college and for the world of work. In both of those settings, you're going to be working with other people and you're going to be working in teams. Um, I hear from student after student who comes back to me. The first thing I did at, at college, I, I was in my class and, and the professor said, okay, now you have to have a team on a marketing project. In the world of work, you have to work with other people all the time. And when you learn that in this setting, you're more prepared for working in, in those collaborative teamwork situations. So anytime that students have the opportunity to learn through authentic experiences, students grow as individuals as well as academically. Um, for the 20 time experience, they learn that they can do more than they thought they could. And then they also learn weaknesses that they exhibit, whether time management is an issue or whether um, the issue is communication with others so that they can work on those particular areas of weakness in order to grow. So we had a lot of employers coming to us as an educational whole in the United States saying, you know what, these students are coming out knowing all of the content, but they can't necessarily communicate with each other well, they can't work in cooperative groups when we hire them, and we really saw that there was a set of skills that we weren't being intentional about helping our students gain. I think when you look at individual students, you see a lot of different skills, which you know is good. Uh, ones that I really like to see in students who tend to do really well are students who have a lot of grit or perseverance uh, because they're able to work through problems. And in order to grow, you know, we really want our students to push themselves. And if you're pushing yourself, you know, you're going to get frustrated. And if you get frustrated, how do you handle that? 99.9% .9 of the time have to fail to learn. I think it's super important um, that kids understand that failure is okay. I ask them if they've ever played the video game Angry Birds, and most of them have played some sort of version of Angry Birds. And I said, you know that game's all about failure. And I think some of them, the light bulb goes off and they realize it is about failure. You have to fail to succeed. Yeah. And I think if they can take that skill from my classroom and realize, you're going to fail, it's okay to fail, but it's what you do after you fail and adjusting. You can either give up and turn around or you can say, what else could I try? And I 
try to run my classroom like that. Fail, but then learn from your failures to correct and to grow. I think the, the skills that come most naturally to students are what they've been accustomed to. So students are really good at finding information. Um, they're really good at um, writing down what they find. They're good at um, maybe answering a prompt related to a specific question. Where students that I've noticed struggle the most is when the problem is undefined and the solutions are undefined. I think the most important thing about using technology in the classroom is not to have technology simply replace pencil and paper. In other words, just saying we wrote our English paper on the computer doesn't mean that you were truly integrating technology into the classroom. You just use the computer instead of a pencil and paper. We really want the students to learn how to integrate all of these tools we have available to us so that they enhance the learning process and actually enhance the skills that they have as they move out into the workforce or the college career pathway. I think sometimes people think that 21st century skills are entirely based in technology and it's all about computers and robots and I don't see it that way at all. I see the interpersonal skills as being a huge component of that 21st century learning. You have these tools, the computers are tools, um, but you need the human to be thinking creatively and problem solving in order to use that tool effectively. So I think you really have to be careful that those two are balanced and go hand in hand. You know, as a teacher in the high school, when I meet students, I'll have known them for a year. And, you know, it's up to all the teachers to really work to build that trust because um, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care is, is kind of the saying that goes back to that. But they've known their friends for 13 years or 14 years, and so they trust them. Uh, so if you're able to kind of enlist students to help teach each other, uh, that really raises the retention and the ability of all of them. Ultimately, the goal is to get to a point where we can personalize learning for every student. And if you think about it, if the students gain the 21st century skills and we then integrate authentic experiences in every classroom, that's when students can really start to head in their own direction and create their own learning. I use Seesaw, which is an online learning journal, and that connects our classroom to their families. So it makes school interactive with home as well. They can comment, their um, parents can comment on their work that they see every day. So instead of them going home and saying, what did you do today? They'll, they're actually able to say, wow, I loved how I saw you know, your interactive character map today. That was really great how you made Frog and Toad come to life. For starters, we'd really like one-to-one -one iPads or one-to-one -one devices for our students. It's tough for them to share. We're able to do it and it helps with their collaboration. Um, but having a device in everybody's hands would be really cool. These skills have really been in classrooms informally forever. And to call them 21st century skills is sometimes kind of funny because they're skills that we've needed no matter what century we were in. What we're really doing is looking at Milan 21 being the initiative that formalizes these skills in our classrooms K-12. The 21st century skills drive students to collaborate with others in diverse ways, to think critically, to problem solve. And so they take this outside of the walls of the classroom in order to work with new individuals, people that they might not regularly come in contact with or that they might not know well. And it gives them the ability to think critically about the world and how they can improve it.